Oh, don't. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest any one should boast, given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used for the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, the ones scattered around the world. No peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Last week, what we talk about? What we talk about? What we talk about? Um, last week we were discussing um, what did we talk about last? Oh, <clears throat> uh, um, I know we talking about. Forgiveness and want to pick privately this time. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. We was on Matthew 17. Oh, that's right. No, yeah, we was in uh, we was in Matthew because uh, uh, we was in 16 first, right? Because Yahushua, he uh, he took he took the the boys to the mountain. He took Peter, he took John, and he took uh. Took Peter, he took John, and he took James, right? So before that, so you remember before that, before he took them all, he asked, he's like, "Who do people say I am?" You know what I'm saying? How do what are the people talking about out there? And you know what I'm saying? The world, what y'all hear? And and you know, some was like, "Oh man, they they be saying you Elijah." Some of them think you Jeremiah. Some of them think you one of the prophets, right? And then but he asked Peter, like, "Who do you say I am?" You know what I'm saying? Peter was like, "Mama, you asking me?" You the son of the living God. You the Messiah, right? Then after that, he took he took uh, Peter, John, and James. He took all three of them to this mountain, and then on the mountain he started to glow. He started to have this glow about him. Clothes was all bright white. You know what I'm saying? His skin was glowing. You know what I'm saying? So he started to glow. And we didn't talk about it last week, but it's somebody who did that before, who face had a glow to it. You know what I'm saying y'all remember Moses, he had a glow on his face. Moses had to wear wear a veil because the glow was going away. You know what I'm saying? So he had to wear a veil. But he had popped that veil off and his face would be glowing after he went up there and talked to the most high God. Right? So y'all sure his entire body was glowing, clothes and everything. And after that, sure enough, Moses and Elijah popped up. We talked a little bit about the prophecies that's related to Elijah, how how it has been prophesied that that um, Elijah will return. And we also had an example of Elijah having his spirit put on another prophet. You know what I'm saying? And so we talked about how John the Baptist also came in the spirit of Elijah. Then after that, we uh, we went on and Yahushua started to teach us a little bit um, about uh, a few different things in chapter 17, um, where, uh, you know what I'm saying, we went, what's going to happen in the how Elijah going to restore things. Uh, and so on and so forth. So this week we kind of continue on with teachings from Yahushua, uh, where he gets a little bit deeper. Uh, at this point, he's about to go into, um, you know, how we should treat one another. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and kick it off and hear what he got to say. This is uh, Matthew chapter eighteen. It's Matthew chapter eighteen, verse one. At the same at the same time came his disciples unto Yahushua, saying. Who is the greatest in the kingdom? Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahshua called the little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right. So he gave he gave you a few times so far, he's given you requirements to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right. And here the question was, who's the greatest in the kingdom? 
So based off of what we've read so far, what has Yahushua said about the greatest in the kingdom that we can reference to? Right? It's two, two other situations where he talked about being great in the kingdom. Right? One of them was Matthew chapter 5. Let's grab it real quick. This is Matthew chapter 5. Give me verse, uh, give me verse uh, 16. Uh, not 16. Give me verse, give me verse 18. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. Give me verse 19. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Watch what the book says. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Appreciate you. You reading? You on mute? See, can you hear me? Hello? You fell asleep? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, 19. Uh, my bad. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So here in chapter five, he gave us two things. He one told us how to be great in the kingdom which is got to keep the law and you got to teach people to do so. You'll be great in the kingdom. That's what he said, right? That's one thing. He said, keep the law, teach other people to do so. You'll be great in the kingdom, right? Then another thing he said, read verse uh, 20 again. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So the only way to enter into the kingdom of, he kingdom of heaven is your righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, right? We're going to talk about the righteousness of the Pharisees, but remember, if you want to be great in the kingdom, you got to keep the law and teach others to do it, all right? That's his words. That's what he just said. Least in the kingdom, you'll break least of the, the least of the can, uh, commandments and teach others to do it. You'll be least in the kingdom. But in all situations, you have to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. If you don't exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you won't even be least. You just won't be in at all, is what he's saying. By no why you'll get in there if you don't exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. So this is something that he's told us early on about getting into the kingdom and about being great in the kingdom, right? We're not going to jump back to 18 yet, but in 18, they asked him, they said, who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom? His response was, oh, man, if you ain't even if you don't come to me like these kids, your butt ain't even going to get in. Right. So we think back. Wait a minute. What has he told us about being the great in the kingdom? You got to keep the law and teach others to do so. And then he also come back and he says, if your righteousness don't exceed the, that of the Pharisees, you won't even get in. Now he's telling us if you don't come to him like this kid, you won't even get in. What else has he told us about being great in the kingdom? John the Baptist. Huh? Well, he's, he, when you're saying John the Baptist, the least king. Oh, yeah. that's No, yeah. Let's grab that. That's, uh, what is that? Matthew 11? I think it's Matthew 11. I don't know what verse. You might have to help me out on that one. Probably like Matthew 11, maybe early. It's probably like verse 11, actually. <sighs> maybe it's 11, 11. Matthew 11, 11. Let me see. That's what 11, 11 says? What else is that? Barely I'll say on the U.S. Ooh, that boy hit it right on the dot, boy. <laughs> That's Matthew 11. I probably want 10. This is uh, Matthew 11, verse 10. It's Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, 
notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Right? So then he said being least in the kingdom of heaven is being greater than John the Baptist and John the Baptist is greater, right? He's he's the greatest of those born from woman, born from a woman. Right? So when you take that into a consideration, what is he saying? He's saying to get into the kingdom, right? One you got to be better than John the Baptist, and he's the greatest human being, is what he's saying, right? Then two, you your righteousness got to exceed that of the Pharisees, right? And then three, you got to come onto him like this little child. All these different things we got to construct in our mind to build the picture of what it takes to get into the kingdom, right? Because he's he's giving us these hints, and he's speaking to us, and some of this stuff is is, is, a, is a parable. Right. It's not straightforward. It's like a riddle is what he's kind of given us. Right. But we can put it together and find out exactly what he's talking about if we pay attention. Right. This is uh, this is back at uh, 18. This is uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse one. Right. So they asked him, they said, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? He said, man, listen, if you don't come to me like these little kids, you ain't even going to make it in. I don't even know why you asked me that. Your butt don't come in with the little kids. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even going to get in. It's Matthew chapter 18, verse one. Well, he wasn't saying you have to be greater than John. He's saying if you make it into the kingdom, you will be greater than John. The least in the kingdom will be greater than John. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's, that's more precise. Yeah. At the same time came his disciples unto Yahshua, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahshua called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever so shall. So now he's saying, If you humble yourself, just like these, this little child, the same is greater, or, or the same will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. All right? Keep going. Watch this. Whosoever shall therefore humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receives me. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for that for him that a milestone were hung hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. So you remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about how, you know what I'm saying, how we kind of have to know the word, and we were talking about the type of people that was following Yahushua. Right? So you got some people like Peter and the and the disciples and all that, who they come across them and they probably not super well versed in the scripture. Right. They probably not these experts in scripture. They not scribes. Right. The book never described them as such. Right. And then you got the Pharisees and the scribes who are experts in the scripture. And you see that it's some of the people who aren't ex experts, who don't really know the law all that well. Right. They don't know the history all that well, but they look at y'all sure and they looking like, man, that boy doing stuff I ain't never seen before. He got to be from God. Right. But to anybody who knows the scriptures, you would look at these and be like, man, these are the same people that will fall for anything. They will fall for anybody walking up. So we look at them like they gullible. But that's how kids are. So this is what he's saying. He's saying, listen, you got to believe. You got to be gullible when you talk. This is, this is his requirement. He's saying, listen, you won't get into the kingdom if you're not gullible when I'm talking to you. You got to humble yourself just like these little kids. Because sometimes we think we know too much. So it's hard for y'all. Sure, you can see his approach. His approach, he's not begging nobody. He's not trying to convince nobody. He's not going up to nobody like, look, let me prove to you who I am. He's not doing that. So you got to just be mesmerized like a kid would and just hang on to his every word. That's the only way he's telling you going to get in. Otherwise, he said, if you don't, then you won't get in. That's what he means when he said, if you humble yourself, you take a little kid and you walk up to a little kid, you can tell him darn anything. Right? 
So that's why he tells us, and we're going to read this a lot later, we learn in the scripture that the world is going to look at us like we're fools. Because that's the same way we look at kids oftentimes, right? We look at these kids be like, man, your butt don't know nothing. Right? But that's what it takes. Because when you think you know too much, you be wrong. A lot of us be, when how we know something and God ain't taught us? How we know something we ain't read his book? We don't understand this book. Right? We ain't got no prophet to guide us about. How do we think we know something? The only thing that has to tie down is the book, right? And so it's always healthy for us to judge everything by the book. And then when we judge it by the book, judge nothing before it's time, right? We always got to hear people out. We always got to let things play out. We can't be quick to make a judgment before it's time. Otherwise, we'll fall into the same situation. We're not being humble as little children. Right? We think we know too much. Keep going. Watch this. He said, anybody who offend one of these little kids, right? He said, man, that's like offending me. Watch. He's going to keep telling you. Watch this. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe he said, that offenses are going. He said, listen. He said, woe, destruction unto the world because of offenses. When he talking about offenses, he talking about somebody causing he's somebody talking about somebody causing sin. Right? So he's saying destruction to the world for the people that cause sin. Right? He said, it ain't no way around it. People are going to cause sin. But watch this. Well, woe to that man by whom the offense comes. He said, listen, it's gonna happen. Ain't no way around it. But man, destruction to the person that caused it. Keep going. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them in uh, from thee. It is better to thee to enter into the enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet and be cast into everlasting fire. Right. So he said, "Listen, if your hand or your foot offends you, in other words, remember when he's saying offend in this con context, he's not talking about like somebody hurting your feelings, right? Somebody calling you stupid, you offended me." No, no, no. He's talking about if somebody causes you to sin, right? So when he says offend you, he's saying if somebody tempts you to sin. So if you got a best friend, right, and y'all been hanging out for forever, that's your man or that's your homegirl, whatever, right? And y'all go and this best friend try to compel you like, listen, just for old time's sake, let's just take something up out this store real quick. You know, what? Like, like we used to do when we were little girls, you know what I'm saying? They'll just go in there. Just stuff some stuff in our pocket and just run out, right? If you do it, that person has offended you in the sense that Yahushua was talking about because they've caused you to sin, right? They've tempted you to sin and you agreed to it. And so he's saying destruction onto the person that take one of these little kids and convince them to rebel against me. He's saying, man, it's going to be worse for that person. It's going to be horrible, but it's going to be destruction for that person. So then he's saying, he's going on to tell you, he's looking like, man, listen, offenses are, are going to come, but destruction to the person that brings that offense. Then he goes on to say, now, listen, if your hand or your foot, your arm or your foot even cause you to sin. Right. So you can you can imagine being tempted by something external, right? Somebody external coming to you and, and convincing you be like, no, nah, man, the Bible ain't real. You know what I'm saying? No, some white men wrote that. You ain't got to just sound. This is what you need to be looking at, the Quran, right? This is what you need to be looking at, Scientology, or you know what I'm saying? Whatever these people going to end up coming up with, right? That's when y'all is saying they've offended that person, right? And offenses come. Now then, there's a type of offense that comes from, <laughs> excuse me, that comes from you. Right. So then he's saying he's giving you a parable and saying, even if your arm or your leg causes you to uh, sin, your arm or your foot causes you to sin. What do you say do to it? Cut it off. Cut it off. The idea here is if you're willing to cut off your own arm. We all seen Saul, right? You ain't never seen Saul. Y'all like y'all like watching them scary movie. You ain't seen Saul yet. Saul ain't really even scary. It's just gory. You saw Saul? How you see darn Saul? 
It's rated darn R. Would you? Yeah, I got tricked you. Now your butt need a whooping. You know what I mean? I'm about to, I saw, saw. So look, you got saw, and he had take somebody that he kind of feel a way about, right? You know what I'm saying? He had set them up in this predicament. They had wake up being drugged or something. They wake up and they in this room. You know what I'm saying? They find their arm tied to a darn wall, and then they got a saw in front of them. And then saw, he will come out, and he, you know what I'm saying? He got his little thing, his little mask on. He will come out on the video, and he'll say, because you. You know what I'm saying? We're a judge and you made this incorrect ruling or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He always pick a reason on him. Then he says, now, what you need to do is take that saw with your left hand and then saw your arm out to get free. You know what I'm saying? So then, like, everybody going to have stage fright. So then something crazy start happening in the room, like the room start closing in. So if you don't saw your arm off, you're going to die anyway. So your only chance of living, you take it and then you got to ah, 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 start sawing it off. Well, that's what a person would do to live. If you see my only chance at living is sawing my arm off, who you think was the original saw? Yahushua. Right? Yahushua trying to tell you, listen, if your right hand going to cause you to sin, well, just cut it off. If that's your excuse. If you looking like, it's for the people that say they, it's impossible to stop sinning, right? If your mindset is it's impossible to stop sinning, then you got to ask yourself, why what is it which of the sins you know what i'm saying like which of the sins is it that i just can't stop myself from doing my eyes always wondering and looking at the women right well guess what he would tell you pluck them out because if you took your life that serious then you would have no i guarantee you me personally right i guarantee you before you pluck out your eyes you would just stop looking in that direction Right. If you took your life that's so serious that, listen, if I can't stop looking at people I ain't supposed to look at and if I can't start touching stuff that I ain't supposed to touch, I just go ahead and cut it off. If you took it that serious, I guarantee you it wouldn't come to you cutting off. You would just stop touching whatever you need to touch. So what he's really saying here is there is no excuse. Right. He's telling you everybody who be telling you it's impossible to stop sinning. What he's telling you here is that's not true. He said, listen. If it if it's that bad, it'd be better for you to cut off all your limbs, be walking around here as a darn pair of a darn legion. You know what I'm saying? With no feeling in your darn back, then it would be for you to go into hell burning and everlasting. What do you say? Fire that lasts a couple minutes. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell. No, we didn't get to the eyes yet. Go back up. Rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. He said everlasting fire. Everlasting fire. That's fire that lasts forever. And some of these Christians, they try to soften the blow. Like, yeah, well, see, brother, the fire lasts forever. God is a merciful God. He ain't making you actually burn forever. Like you need to. I remember a Christian told me that. I said, man, y'all, y'all will say anything. Like, what's the point of even? Let's like, what's the point of even coming up with that lie? Man, telling you everlasting fire. You think you think the fire is going to burn? When was the last time you 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 uh you turned the fire on the stove and didn't have nothing to put on? it? I don't I don't think nobody had. I can't think of nobody turn the fire on and it ain't got no purpose. You ain't trying to warm up the house. You ain't trying to burn nothing. You ain't trying to cook nothing. You just. Go down to the stove, turn it on, and move on. We used to turn that thing on it was cold in the house. You know what I'm talking about? It was cold in the house. Back in the day, mom tell you don't turn on the heater. Open the oven. Turn that thing right on on. You know what I'm saying? But when was the last time you did that, you ain't trying to cook nothing? That don't make sense. It wouldn't make sense to have fire burning forever if it ain't something for it to burn forever. But that's they minds. They come up with all this stuff. Well, see, now technically, brother, that's what they say, though. You know what I'm saying? See, now you reading into it, and they right. If we just took this one and we just said, it say everlasting fire, but it really mean that people are burning forever in the everlasting fire. If we only had this verse, we probably, yeah, they would be right. Like, yeah, we kind of adding that to the scripture. That ain't what it say. But we ain't only got this. We got prophecy. We know what the books say. Right? Grab, uh, grab Daniel 12. 
This is Daniel chapter 12. Yeah, we're going to do uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Oh, we lost Brother T. I don't know what he got going on. What you got yeah. going on over there, man? I don't know. I think it's you. <laughs> it nothing to do with me. Yes, it is. It's Daniel chapter 12. Did you hear me? I hear you now. Sorry. Uh, grab Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. It's Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Yeah, Zakai doing it the real way. You cheating with the phone. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You cheating with the phone. I don't know. One day, your phone might be dead. You still got to read the book. You want to spend six hours looking for a book? You know what I'm saying? Or you want to be able to turn right to it because you know that thing. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? saying. Everybody got to make their own choices. That's all I'm saying. At the very least, read it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. It's Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time, Michael stand up. Michael, uh, and at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children, children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust on the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Right, so and hold they, on. He said, look, he said, many of them that do what? This Daniel talking about the resurrection, y'all. Read it, read it again. He said, many of them that do what? Was that verse 3 or 4? Mm, this is verse 1. Verse oh, 2. One. Verse 2. Verse and many two, okay. of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Shame and everlasting contempt. That's not contempt that's, you know what I'm saying, just last for a little bit. Whatever you're going through, the, the judgment, contempt is judgment. You know what I'm saying? So whatever your judgment is, it lasts forever. Whatever your punishment is, it lasts forever right so now if the punishment is everlasting fire right and the contempt is everlasting then how are you gonna say that you don't burn forever right the books say that's how it works he told you that's how it works that's why he told you it's everlasting right grab uh grab mark chapter 9 this is uh, Mark chapter 9. Jump on down to verse 40. Verse 41. This is Mark chapter 9, verse 41. All right? It's important. When you know the scripture, this, look, this little thing that we're talking about right now, to a lot of people, would be a small thing. Right. When you don't know the scripture and somebody come up to you and they they, you know, what I'm saying? they present themselves like they know the scripture more to you. And they say, oh, well, see, brother, actually, a lot of people think you burn in hell forever. Really? You know what I'm saying? The, the, the fire is everlasting. But we we you know what I'm saying? They're not they ain't gonna say we they should be saying we don't. But you know what I'm saying? Those that burn, you know, what I'm saying those are they just gonna burn. They'll burn up. And then the fire keeps going. But they already burnt up. This is Mark. Chapter nine. Verse 40, 41. Mark chapter 9, verse 41. Watch what the book say. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because he belonged to the Messiah, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And whosoever shall offend one of the least, one of these little ones that believe in me, 
it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It'd be better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands and to, and to go into hell, into the fire that will never, that shall net well. There's a fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. He said where their what? Worm dieth not. Right? So now, the worm is going to survive the fire. And the worm, when you, when you got a dead body, what start crawling all over it? Bunch of worms. You get a bunch of worms and maggots and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? I hope nobody got to deal with a dead body. But you're around, you around a dead body, it's going to collect all types of worms and maggots and flies in the matter of hours. Right? Hours that stuff is going to happen as the body starts decomposing. It just sends signals to all these insects and they're going to start crawling in it and start eating on it. Right? On the body and decompose it. Right? So now, if there is no dead body, would there be a worm? Right? The worm is looking for the dead body. What Yahushua is telling us right now is their worm doesn't die. So what you're trying to tell me is you think it's more believable that the worm survives this fire that's burning. Right? But the human body does not. The human body gets burnt up, turns into ashes, but the worm is just climbing right through the fire, no problem. No, it's everlasting contempt. And now he's telling you, your worm, in other words, your worm, the worm that's after your body, after your butt go to hell and burn, that thing will be stuck to you forever. You burn forever. Right? This ain't no darn with the, uh, what the Catholic got, the Catholic, they call it uh, purgatory. You know what I'm saying? They call that thing. And they mind, they came up with this whole little thing that's like, it's temporary. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't go all the way to hell. You go to like halfway hell. It's temporary. And then after that, if you if you act good enough, you can come on back. You know what I'm saying? And they mind, that's how that thing work out. So that's why they don't like to look at, they don't like to look at the punishment. They like to weaken the punishment. You even got some people to say, Hell is just a concept. Heaven and earth is just, I mean, heaven and hell is just a concept, right? A good day is heaven and a bad day is hell. I'll be looking like, yeah, y'all got, y'all in for a rude darn awakening. That thing gonna be a What's surprise. That? You're like, ah, it was real. You know what I'm saying? Be lighting they uh, butt up. It was this one guy I talked to. He don't believe it's real at all. Yeah, no, a lot of them don't want, don't want to believe that stuff. And I don't blame them. I think Are you supposed a, to stay motivated? You you out here trying to do whatever you're trying to do to sin and live your life and be happy. How are you supposed to be motivated in doing that and you thinking about burning forever as a result? No, you got to get that stuff out your mind somehow. I'll be like, no, nah, man, that thing ain't real. I don't believe in that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here trying to sin. That thing counterproductive to what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? But we got to understand what the books say. It's okay if you don't believe it, but at least understand and know that's what the books say. That way you know what you don't believe. When something is the truth, it's good to know it if you're going to choose not to believe it. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. You want to at least be informed. You know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why lying ain't good. You know what I'm saying? You take away people's options when you lie. Right? You want to manipulate somebody. You want to lie to somebody. You want to take away their option. That's what, that's what the whole point is. You know what I'm saying? You don't give them the full story. You give somebody the full story, then they're going to have all the options. They're going to be like, okay, okay, I know what to do with this situation. When I get into it, you know what I'm saying? When I get into a situation, I start, I start trying to come up with solutions before even knowing the full story. People just tell me, yeah, you know what I'm saying? This, that, and the other went wrong. I start, well, I'm not, you probably only got to do this. And if it ain't that, then it's this. And if it ain't that, I don't even want to look at the actual situation. I just be telling them. And then they got to come to me like, yeah, but why don't you take a look at the case for me? You know what I'm saying? We be at work. They be like, mm, but why don't you actually put your eyes on the case? And you know what happened every time I put my eyes on it? I be like, uh, well, that changes everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh. That changes everything. Now that I'm looking at it, you don't do that. You don't do this. This is the only way to fix it. Because if you look at the whole matter, right, you can judge it properly. You know what I'm saying? You're dealing with a whole bunch of hypotheticals you don't know. Your options are taken away. So that's what liars want to do, right? Liars want to, they want to talk to you. They want to make you think it's something over here. And they want to take away your option, right? 
So when you want to lie to yourself, because that's the main problem that we got, right? A lot of people like to lie to themselves. They like to, they like to manipulate their own mind, right? And when you do that, when you lie to yourself and you try to manipulate your own mind, guess what you're going to do? You don't even want to be exposed to the facts. You don't even want to be exposed to the truth, right? Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to say, man, I don't, wanna, no, no, I don't believe in that hell stuff, man. That's crazy. No, I mean, I don't, I don't read that. I mean, I believe there is a God, but you know what I'm saying? I believe God just speak to us. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe the book. Like, I don't believe, you know what I'm saying? It don't even make sense. Some white man, you know what I'm saying, wrote this book. Like, uh-huh, I hear you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I hear you. You know what I'm saying? You looked it up. It's all white man did it, huh? You did that research? Like, where you come up with? Somebody told you? Oh, okay. So you don't believe the book, but you believe some random person on darn Twitter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some random person on darn TikTok. You believe that. You believe a Facebook post. That's the, that's believe it. You, that's trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you people can't talk to me. You, you can't talk to me. Y'all butts was wearing masks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all had masks on y'all darn face. And y'all let these people put, you know what I'm saying? Some random experimental drug in your darn arm had you, it was people, they take the shot. They about, about to die. It was a lady took the shot, shot at my job, had to call off. I'm mad because we had work to do. She called off for a whole darn week after taking that darn shot. I was like, your butt was fine before you took it. I know, but you know what I'm saying? It's just, I mean, we have to be safe. I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to lose my job because I'm about to say something to you. You sound darn crazy. Got to stay safe. Your butt was just sitting there. She had to be rushed to the darn hospital, she said. After taking the shot, before, before taking the shot, this lady is good. She took the shot, had to be rushed to the darn hospital. I don't want to hear nothing about, you know what I'm saying? I don't believe that book. I'm offended. You know what I'm saying? Offense is much gone. I'm offended you talk to me. You don't believe the book, but you believe these people enough to put a darn mask on your face. Oh, I used to give your kids darn vaccines and shoot all that stuff up in them. They, they, they shooting up a hepatitis shot in your kid. Your kid ain't even a day darn old. And that makes sense to us. Thing is crazy, and y'all don't yeah. believe no darn book. Y'all believe a whole lot of stuff, though. Y'all believe a whole lot of stuff. Y'all don't believe a book, but guess who the idiot? We supposed to be the idiots. Okay, you keep going then. You know what I'm saying? Hit all the shots. Well, it's a six month checkup. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You believe EP? You ain't never read a book that told you you need a vaccine. But guess what? When that doctor with a little coat walk in and he start doing, they start doing all that silly. They be playing with your kids. They be look. They put your kid down and they start moving the legs like this, like they, your butt ain't darn doing nothing. I just paid you $500 and the insurance co- company pay you another 500, probably 5,000 for a little, for you to move my kid's legs back and forth. Put it on, you ain't even listening to nothing. You put the stethoscope right there on their darn collarbone. What you gonna hear from there? People darn be lying and we believe every word of it. It might just be, I ain't talking to all y'all. It might just be Las Vegas doctors. These doctors, I'll be like, I be looking at these talking like y'all some scam artists. Y'all don't be doing. I remember I got a physical one time. I went in there for a physical. <laughs> that boy stuck. Look, he stuck one of the lights in my eyes, a little thing in my eye, and put the wooden thing. Pulled, told me to pull out my tonsil, and then told me, "All right, you look good." And told me to leave. He checked my height. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My man checked my blood pressure. You know what I'm saying? He did me the little tonsil thing and did my height. You know what I'm saying? And then asked me my own weight. He didn't even put me on the thing. He just asked me my, how much you weigh. And wrote it down. I said, this is by that's the that's the physical? I was like, oh yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, just go get some blood work, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on back. I was like, okay, for sure. I was done after that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing to say to y'all. So, y'all believe, you know what I'm saying? Y'all believe all types of stuff. Go ahead, my bad. So at work, when I was asking him about the, the shot, I was like, so I like, so you're gonna get a shot that's gonna make you sick to prevent from getting sick. That thing used to blow my mind, bro. And I mean, not on, not only that, you gonna get a shot that it don't like. Who is even saying that it does? Like nobody even stands on it and says it's gonna do anything. These people didn't lie before it came out. The first time they came out, they said, "Look, you won't even get COVID. You get this shot, you won't get COVID." Then they come back, they come, and you you get shot, you'll get COVID though. But it ain't gonna be bad at all. Then you get it, it's like, you're gonna get COVID, and it's gonna be bad, but you're not gonna die. <laughs> no, the first one they said, you're not gonna end up in the hospital. 
Then, then after that, if you're going to get COVID, you might go to the hospital, but you're not going to die. And then people start still dropping dead. And it's to the point now, they don't even talk about the numbers now because now almost everybody who drops dead from COVID now had the shot. And it's just like, what are, like, what, how, how we let these people lie to us like this and go with it? But you, I bring the Bible to you, look, you don't even want to research it. You don't, even, you don't even want to fact check. You just, white man wrote it, don't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? And then for the white people, they're going to look at it like, oh, well, no, nah. I mean, it's just folklore. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, Harry Potter darn folklore, and you love that. Crazy deep. What else we got? Keep going. And if I can be plucked out, it's better for the to enter. And look, no offense to anybody who got the shot, but you know what I'm saying? You you got that shot. You got to be humble. In my mind, look, it's just a few things you do. If you end up get, if you got the shot and you wear, like, if you still got an urge to put on the mask, you just gotta. It ain't no, I'm not, no offense. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all, you know what I'm saying? People be scared and we we trusted the leadership of the country. That's what you suppose. You ain't do nothing wrong. When I'm saying this, I'm not saying you did anything wrong, right? What I'm saying is you have to be humble. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't talk to just anybody any kind of way if that's what you did. Like, you got to, you got to look and reassess your life. You got to be like, no, nah, I might be making, you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, I might not be the best decision maker. You have to kind of look at yourself that way because somebody might be trying to tell you something and you can't pop out and immediately just be like, I ain't believe in that book. That's crazy because, you know, let me look over my life. Dang, I fell for the shot. I fell for the mask. I fell for the Democrats. I fell for the Republican. I fell for this. I fell for the, my boyfriend. I fell for my girlfriend. I fell for all these. You can look back in your life and be like, dang, I have a history of making horrible decisions. When that happens, you got to take your time and be like, okay, let me let me relax and let me hear out the whole matter. You know what I'm saying? So if you you got a little shot and everything, you know what I'm saying? That's what you got to consider. I don't I don't mean to make you feel any kind of way cuz you got to, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got to live with that thing and that thing, you know what I'm saying? Who knows what the long-term effects of this stuff is. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to make it look like I'm just trying to make people look bad, but at the same time, you God, like you specific, let me talk to you in the camera. You who got the shot, <laughs> you gotta be humble. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta have some humility. That's crazy. Keep going. Yo, shout out to the ones that didn't want to take it but were scared to get fired, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that thing ain't rough. But you yeah. too, you still you know. Like, listen, you too. You know what I'm saying? If you did it, cause it was like, man, the check, you gotta be humble too now. Cause you gotta be out your darn mind if you thought. You know what I'm saying? That half, like all these white folks in there. So this is the, this is what you gotta. You just gotta. You gotta. You gotta watch the field. You know what I'm saying? When you got half of the rich, not even rich, the rich and poor white folks looking at you like, uh, when you look, when when the sh shot first came out, Mark Zuckerberg. You know what I'm saying? This is the runner of Facebook. That boy popped out. They leaked the video of him telling his staff, "Listen, I don't think you should get it." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did the man run it? Look, he's telling people, he's telling his employees, I don't think y'all should get it. While at the same time, if somebody said that on his website, he shuts their website down. Right? This is how these people play with y'all. Right? He, shut, he shuts their posts down on Facebook if they say, hey, I don't think you should get the vaccine. He going to put a disinformation tag on it. All this stuff these people were doing. It was crazy. It was bonkers. Right? Then he tell his staff, they got a leaked video. I remember when that thing came out. Leaked video of him telling his people, listen, I don't think y'all should get it. I'm looking like, oh, this is different. But don't nobody talk about none of this stuff. We probably, the average person probably don't even know this stuff, although it is right there on the internet. Anybody can go look it up. He, matter of fact, he just came out because, you know, he's switching sides now. You know what I'm saying? He's switching sides. He just came out. He wrote a letter to Congress. And he said, Congress, you know what? I don't think it's appropriate the way y'all pressured me to, uh, to, to censor stuff for COVID and censor stuff for political reasons and do all this stuff. He said, I don't think it's appropriate. He is like, in fact, during COVID, 
I didn't even want to do some of these things and I regret doing some of these things that another. You know what I'm saying? So now he's trying to switch sides and make it look like, oh, the government pr pressured me to do all that stuff. Well, guess what? I'll tell Mark, he got a lot of money now. You know what I'm saying? It's probably, it's probably hard for him to look at his life and be like, I'm a horrible decision maker. It's probably hard. But I look at him and tell him the same thing. Listen, my man, you better be humble. If I run, listen, if I run into Mark Zuckerberg and I get to talk to him about the book and he talked to me, he say, man, I don't believe that book. I'm going to have to look at Zuckerberg and be like, hey, be darn humble. You know what I'm saying? Be darn humble. You let the government pressure you into telling people not to get the shot while you were telling your employees they probably shouldn't get it. You know what I'm saying? That's all I've been trying to tell these people. All right, my bad. Where were we at? That? <laughs> For the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will you season it? Have, have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. That's Mark 9? Yeah. Uh, jump, back over to, uh, jump back over to Matthew. Matthew 18. Where we leave off? Uh, verse 9. This is Matthew chapter 18, verse 9. And look, no, no, look. Uh, that would be Sister Sharon. Uh, Sister Pamela made a good point. She said, look, they do got to be gullible. That's what we just talked about. She's like, yeah, we just talked about what they do got to be gullible. That's my point. You can't. Now, look, I think a person is going to end up walking directly into the kingdom if they fall for the shot and they fall for the mask. And they fall for all the politicians and they fall for all this stuff. And then when the book is presented to them, they fall for that too. Right? If you fall for all of these lies and then the book is presented to you, you'd be like, oh, wow, everything in the Bible is true. And you fall for that too, then you're going to be all right. You're going to walk. You're going to be in the kingdom before me, before a lot of us. Because that's what Yahushua was talking about. My problem is the ones that fall for all this stuff and then they want to get super critical when it comes to the Bible. And that's the one that's right. I'm like, boy, make it make sense. You, you didn't ask no question. When these people, when they told y'all that, what they say, toilet paper was running out? That was wild. You know what I'm saying? They told, they told y'all toilet paper was running out or something crazy. You know what I'm saying? You didn't ask no question. Yo, but jumped up and started buying five, six, seven packs of toilet paper and storing them in your darn garage. Right? Yo, I thought like you create the shortage like because you. somebody told you it was a shortage when it really wasn't a shortage. You know what I'm saying? So you create it because everybody's trying to take from everybody else. Like if you fall for the stuff, then I feel like at some point you got to be like, let me go ahead and fall for the book too. Or if you're going to be critical of the book, then start with the rest of the lies that you be followed for. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Wait, 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 wait. One more time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> wait. No. The toilet paper killed me, bro. I swore up and down it was going to be food that way. But Look, it was toilet paper. Come on, toilet paper. <laughs> If you make, look, they make a darn fool out of. I'm telling you, boy, that thing is crazy. Oh man, I'm like, yo, I ain't listen. I ain't never gonna forget these white folks for COVID, bro. I'm never. I'm not letting that one go. I'm not letting that one go. The government got to come to me. You know what I'm saying? We about to read about forgiveness in a little bit. The government gonna have to come to me seventy times seven. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm that one. I'm looking like no, <laughs> no, y'all are crazy like, for pulling this off, and then I'm even mad because people are not mad about it. It's like everybody okay with it. I'm looking like no, that's that's this is nuts. That's I'm crazy. Like, I'm looking like okay, so wait a second. The world's going to crap, and everybody panicking. We want some dark toilet, toilet papers paper. going like y'all tripping over the, like like I'm I'm like low key scared. Like man, I gotta go to the grocery store get some food. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, they probably about to buy all the food. We gonna start. But then I'm like, oh, it's toilet paper y'all tripping over? Like, I couldn't get over that one. That thing crazy. People crazy. Man, that's crazy. Okay, I'm back. Be back.
All right, so this Danielle said I still had an oversupply at the cheaper price. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And Lysol. You remember the Lysol wipes? Yeah, <laughs> Lysol and hand sanitizer. Them things. Now the Lysol rice, I think that part was real. I think I don't think I don't think people yell. I don't think that manufactured that one. I think, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, hey, everybody getting sick. How you wipe this stuff down? They making us feel like, you know what I'm saying? So people really just out of fear of the sickness grab that. But the toilet paper, it ain't nothing about COVID. That made you, I don't know, they did say pooping was one of the symptoms. You remember at the beginning of COVID, everything was a symptom. You know what I'm saying? Like every symptom of every sickness was a COVID symptom. You know what I'm saying? At the beginning, man, them people. Oh, them some cold-blooded people. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a, what they do, 30 for 30? I'm going to make a 30 yeah. for 30 on COVID. COVID was out of line time, bro. <laughs> it's wild. That was wild. Them people, yeah. Some of my coworkers looking at me crazy because I ain't wearing no mask and I ain't getting no shot. Like that, that was crazy. What? Anyway, we back now. Matthew eighteen nine. It's Matthew chapter eighteen verse nine. You know, what I'm saying after a brief intermission. <laughs> <laughs> and if that I offend thee. Pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into hellfire. Take right? Three. So at the end of the day, it is important, right? Absolutely important that we care for our life in Yahushua so much that we would be willing to cut off our own limbs and pluck out our own eyes. And if we had that level of faith, Right. And understand what that means in a literal sense. In a literal sense, what that means is if I felt like I can't, I just can't control myself. I have to touch this or I have to look at this or I have to do whatever. If I had the faith to be like, man, look, I got to make it in a life. I'm going to cut my arm off. Me personally, I can guarantee you, you would stop doing it before you get to that point. But even if you didn't, if you remove the opportunity for you to see it, because you plucked your own eye out and you cut your own arm off, man, what a blessing would that be for you to make it into the kingdom. So Yahushua is telling you, you have zero excuse. Right? You have zero excuse. Keep going. And if thine eye, if, oh wait, sorry. take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of thy father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, does he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains and seek it that which was gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between. Oh, wait, oh, we got there. Go to uh, go to Luke, go to Luke forty six or Luke chapter six, verse forty six for me. This is Luke chapter six, verse forty six. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and does them, I will show you, uh, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against right. Which so now let's go back to 18. I want you all to keep in mind what he just said. Why do you call me Lord master? Right. You call me master, master, but you don't do what I say. And the person that that listen to what I say, man, that boy built up that boy built up in a strong way. Right. Keep that in mind as we go back to 18. This is Matthew chapter 18. You can pick up where we left off about forgiveness. He's giving us instruction this entire way through, right? He's telling us, look, this is how you need to handle it. 
these are the people that's gonna come to me. Walter, whoever, you know what I'm saying, offenses might come. Man, look, if you're gonna sin, go ahead and cut off your whole arm. It'd be better for you to be armless in the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Like he given us instruction this whole time. But in Luke, remember, he asked, why do you say Lord? I mean, yeah, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I say? Right? I just want y'all, the only reason I wanted to go there is because I want y'all to see that this is not a game. Like, he's not, his attitude is not like, oh, do your best. You know what I'm saying? Just try. Sit your butt down, boy. You know what I'm saying? Just try. Do your best. You know, hey, look, we all mess up. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not his, his level of urgency is not we all mess up. No matter how true you may think or think it is or isn't, his urgency, his level of urgency is not like, hey, look, hey, it happened. <laughs> Right? His level of urgency is, come sit down, boy. His level of urgency is, hey, listen, we got to get this right. Matter of fact, if you ever feel like you can't get it right, go ahead and cut your arm off. Go ahead and cut your foot off. Go ahead and pluck your eye out. Right? Do whatever you got to do, but get there. That's what his level of urgency is. So now, keep that in mind as we keep talking about this uh, forgiveness. This is uh, Matthew chapter 18. What verse? 15. Is Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Watch the book say. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. So now, privately, he's saying, if your brother causes an offense or offends you, sins against you, Go to your brother and you say, yo, figure this out, man. I don't like what you did. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? That was wrong what you did. You know what I'm saying? Fix it. I told you this. You said that. That was messed up. That's not how we are supposed to do it. That was out of line what you did. Fix it. Then he said, look, if your brother don't hear you, in other words, if he looking like, man, please, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? This, that, another. He arguing with you. He ain't admitting his fault. This, that, another. He said, the next thing you do, is you go have two more people. Right? Watch this. Keep going. But if you not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And so now this is the situation that you try to talk to your man. Be like, nah, man, I was messed up what you did, this, that, and other. He looking like, man, I didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't how I see it. This, that, and that, that, that. Y'all arguing back and forth. He don't rock with you. So then you be like, you call your other two boys. But hey, look. So look, this is what happened. This, that, and that. Didn't you see him do it? This, that, and that. Yeah, bro, that was foul. So now it's three of y'all on him. Like, no, nah, that was foul, though, bro. No, nah, what you did was foul. But he still ain't trying to listen. He's like, man, y'all crazy. I don't know how y'all looking at it. He's still not trying to listen. Watch the books they do now. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the congregation. But if you neglect to hear the congregation, let him be unto thee as a heathen, a heathen man and a publican. Right. Yeah, so now he said, bring the entire congregation. <laughs> so it start off private. Like, look, bro, trying to give you a chance to make this right. This that another. Man, he ain't trying to hear you. OK, cool. Come back with some boys. Look, that was wrong. That's what the books say. You know what I'm saying? This, that, another. Da, da, da. Man, I ain't trying to hear that. That ain't how I see it. I understand it differently. He bring the whole congregation like, yo. We all in agreement. The entire congregation is in agreement that you as an individual are out of line. You know what I'm saying? According to the book, this is wrong. Then he still don't understand it. He still don't want to hear it. Then the book say kick him out. Right? Books say treat him like a heathen or a public. And a publican is the ones that collect, collect taxes on behalf of Rome. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? Like the Gentile. The Gentile. This the, A publican is somebody who worked for the Gentile. A publican it's like how most black people see a Republican. Think of that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The way, the way black folks look at a Republican, if you got a white Republican come to you, he's like, hey, I'm a, I'm a Trump supporter. You know what I mean? Come on to you. Look, how old are you? And you are, look, you make the screw face at a, a Trump supporter. Ugh, you know what I'm saying? So that's what, a, that's what like a Republican was to us. A Republican was like a Trump supporter. You know what I'm saying? You look like, what? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can't bring your butt over here, right? So he said, treat them like a heathen or a publican. You know what I'm saying? When you treat them like that, then that means you treat them like an outsider. You treat them like somebody who ain't cool, somebody who can't come around, this, that, and other. 
that's the instruction from Yahushua on how to deal with it. But it has to start off private. You can't start off trying to air out somebody's stuff and this, that, and the other. It may get there, yeah, and it should never be with the intention of trying to air nobody out. The intention should always be to convince your brother to make things right, convince your sister to make things right. All right, keep going. Really, I say unto you, whosoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and who mm -hmm. and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? And Yahshua said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy-seven times, seventy times seven. Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto the certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which ought, which ought him ten thousand talents. Before mm -hmm. as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. And the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the right. So now you got you got the master and the master. He he loaned my man some money. He loaned his man some money. You know what I'm saying? One of his workers. You know what I'm saying? Loading some money. The worker out there doing whatever he do. But he didn't he didn't pay the money back. And he thinks he think everything's sweet. So the master looked at him like, hey, uh, where my money at, man? I ain't even got it. You ain't got it, man. I got something for you. I'm going to sell you and your whole family every dime I'm going to get back. So then he was about to sell them to somebody else to make them slaves. And he was going to get the cash up front. Like, I'm going to get my money back. So he's getting ready to sell them. So the dude, he dropped down. He cried like, man, look, man, it's rough out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? You know I respect you. I ain't never did nothing like this. You know what I'm saying? Just help me out, man. Just So then the master was, because the master a good dude. He was moved with compassion. He was like, you know what, bro? Don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at you. You fell down on your knees. You begging me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't even that serious. Don't even worry about it. You, your family, y'all good. He forgives them of the debt. Right? So the servant get up, and this is what he do. Watch this. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which ought him a hundred pence. And he right? So now this is fellow servant. So the master, they, they work for the master. Right now, this is fellow service, somebody else who worked for the master. But he went to him was like, man, you owe me ten dollars, boy. You know, what I'm saying? look, I just I owe him three thousand dollars. I didn't pay it. Right. He forgave my three thousand. Then my fellow servant, I come over there like, hey, bro. We, we got to go to work tomorrow, but you owe me ten dollars, bro. You know, what I'm saying? I gave you ten dollars for gas last week. Watch this. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me that you owe. Right, he laid hands on him. Bow, took him by the throat. Hey, 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 homie, look, give me my money. You know what I'm saying? But got quick. Hey, give me my money. You know what I'm saying? Lay hands on him. Took him by the throat. Watch the book say. And the fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, "Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all." <laughs> so after he slapped him up and took him by the throat, the fellow servant fell down. He is looking like, look, bro, look, I I ain't got it right now. Just. Give me a little bit more time. When he say have patience with me, how about he saying? He's like, give me a little bit more time, bro. Come on. I just ain't, I ain't got it right now. Watch what he say. And he, and he would not, but cast him into prison till he should wait. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So mm -hmm. his fellow servants saw what was done. And they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Didn't right. So now the other servants that worked for the master, they saw what the one servant did who was forgiven, did to the next servant who didn't want to pay him his little ten dollars. He had him put in jail for that ten dollars until he paid the ten dollars back. Meanwhile, he owed man three thousand dollars and didn't pay it and then got forgiven and then went after the little ten dollars. So everybody else looking at that like, oh, you out of line. So they went to the master and they snitched on him. They looking like, nah, man, you know how you forgave him for that $3,000? He ran down Johnny, put hands on him, 
coked him up and then put Johnny in jail over $10. Can you believe that? So then the master looking like, you got to be kidding me. That's what the master, the master like, no way. You dead serious? But watch how the master react. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desired me. Should've you know what I'm saying? I forgave you for all that money you owed me only because you were saying that you my man. You rock with me like that. Watch this. Shouldn't not thou also have, com have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Right? So he's saying very clearly, this is the same way that it's going to happen to you if you don't forgive your brothers. Right? So now let's address Sister yeah. Pamela's question. Sister Pamela's like, is this concerning when Yahushua tell us forgive a person 77 times, 77 times, seven times? Right, he said she she asked the question: Is this talking about the brothers, or is this talking about like random outsiders? He's saying specifically your brother, right? When he said go to your brother and 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 then take two other peoples of the brother and then take the congregation. That's talking about people who believe in the book. When it's talking about the congregation and our brother, talking about the brothers right here. He the, in the parable he talked about fellow servants right that means servants that serve the same master right that's talking about brothers and then very explicitly at the very end there he said likewise will our heavenly father do to you if you don't forgive your brother right so all this is talking about the brethren of the faith that's what this instruction specifically is about right now <clears throat> here's where you get into tricky water Tricky, you know, it's, it's a little tricky. You don't know who is or who isn't going to be a brother. Even if they ain't a brother today, they could be tomorrow. And you might not get a chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might not get a chance to look at them and be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I forgive you. You know what I mean? So, I always say it's safe. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who asks you, this is what I don't teach. I don't teach that you got to forgive preemptively. You know what I'm saying? But I always say it's safe for anybody who asks you for forgiveness, you know what I'm saying, to give it to them. And then if you're really on top of your game, don't hold no grudges for nobody anyway, because what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Even if it's a Gentile, even if they don't ask you forgiveness, what's the point? What you going to say here and stress yourself out about them owing you something? Like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? They get it. Don't nobody want to, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to do the right thing. You got somebody that'll judge every one of them. Gentile, non-Gentile, in the faith, not in the faith. Most High God will judge every last one of them. Even your brother. Even the brother that's in the faith, believe what you believe. He do something wrong. She do something wrong. Most I got to judge them too. All you got to do is leave it to him. Keep walking. You're going to look crazy. You're going to look like you let people walk all over you. You're going to look like all these things. As long as you know where your strength come from, let me tell you, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. It happened so many times in my life. So many times. Oh. I can just feel. Interesting huh? thing. Interesting thing I always thought about. Um, this is like, not satisfactory, nothing like that, but he says 70 times 7, which is 490. And that's around the same amount of years from Moses to the captivity. Somewhere around that, give or take. Like, I don't necessarily know, like, for certain, but around that number, give or take, from Moses to the captivity. So from Moses all the way to King Zedekiah, uh, God kept giving Israel all the chances. And when we finally went into captivity, it was about 490 years from Moses all the way up until, so from the wilderness all the way up until Zedekiah. So I always thought that was pretty interesting. That's a good one. Yeah, I never even thought about that. Yeah. Good one. He <laughs> said, man, saying, look, I've been forgiving y'all for years. You know what I'm saying? Y'all better forgive each other. Y'all yeah. better forgive each other as much as I forgave y'all. Yeah, so y'all, she was basically saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. How many times I forgive y'all, that's how many times. You know what I'm saying? I like that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I remember, uh, yeah, I, yeah uh, I remember looking that up a long time ago, back when uh, back when we first started to really dig deep into it. Good one. I like that. Keep going. What else we got? Well, um, chapter 19. 
That's the end of the chapter? Yeah. Okay. Well then uh Grab uh grab first kings. I was about to say let's, you know what I'm saying, let's pray out, but nah, let's grab first kings real quick. Because we read something yesterday, right, in our reading, or the, was maybe the day before yesterday in our reading. <clears throat> oh yeah. I wanted to talk about that too. If, first Kings, this first Kings chapter 13, verse 1. Watch what the book say. Are you talking about uh the son, right? Son? Huh? No, I'm talking about the man of God. Okay. Man of God to Jeroboam. Yeah. We can talk about the I don't, uh we can talk about the son too if you want, but I'm talking about Jeroboam. Okay. <clears throat> this is uh first Kings chapter 13, verse 1. Watch what the book say. <clears throat> And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of Yahuwah unto Bethlehem. He came from where? <clears throat> Judah. Came from Judah, right? By the word of the Most High God. Watch this. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of Yahuwah and said, O altar, altar, thus says Yahuwah. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah. Josiah by name. You know what I'm saying? saying. Josiah by name called him out too. That's a bad boy. We going for those of us reading the Bible in a year, we are gonna see specifically a name, a son, a son of David with the name Josiah. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be the one to do exactly what this man of God say hundreds of years before he said it. Crazy. And upon thee shall he offer the print the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burned upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which Yahuwah has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when the king Jeroboam heard the saying of the men of Look, God, which when had the fire, king Jeroboam, when he heard him say that, you know what I'm saying? Watch what Jeroboam did. In Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. He did. Look, he pointed at him like, Hey, lay hold on him. Put it for his hand forth like that. Lay hold on him. So he's trying to tell his men to gaffle him up. He is like, lay hold on him, just like that. So Jeroboam put his arm out there and watch what happened. And his hand, which he had put forth against him, dried up so that he could not put it again to him. Right? So then he put his arm out there, lay hold on him. Then all of a sudden his arm dried up and got stuck like that. So that he couldn't pull it back. He couldn't move his arm and bring it back to him. So that he walking around like this. Arm all dried and shriveled, you know what I'm saying? He looking like, you know what I'm saying? All messed up. Then watch what happened. The king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of Yahuwah thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. Right? Look how quick that changed. He went from, hey, get him. You know what I'm saying? He about to have his men killed. All his people was about to kill the man of God. He told him, hey, get that dude. His arm got shriveled up. Whoa. Whoa, I can't pull it back. All right, look, look, look. All right. Ask God for me. You know what I'm saying? Pray for me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Pray for it went from I'm about to kill you to hey man, just pray for me real quick. Right? So somebody try to kill you. You think you're gonna pray for him and try to help him out? But look what the man of God did. And the man of God besought Yahuwah, and the king's hand was restored to him again and became as it was before. Immediately, the man of God start praying. Like, all right, let me pray for you. Right? This is what Yahushua is talking about when he's saying, forget these people. So now we go back to Sister Pamela's question. Right? What Yahushua say, remember, we, we talk about the book, what the book say. What Yahushua was talking about was the brethren. Right? But the man of God didn't have to see Jeroboam as the brethren. He could have easily saw him. Jeroboam at this point had already set up an altar. He's built idols, right? And he's telling people to serve the Most High God on a different day. He said, he said that any old person, all you got to do is make a couple sacrifices and anybody can be a priest. You ain't got to be the son of Aaron. You ain't even got to be a Levite. Man of God could have easily looked at him like, nah, man, you want something different. Right? But nevertheless, he forgave him. You looking like, all right, man, let me pray for you. I know you was about to kill me. Let me pray for you. Get your arm back. Right? We ain't got to get it, but Moses did the same thing. 
Remember with Moses, with, with Moses, he was talking, you know what I'm saying, talking to the Pharaoh, you know what I'm saying, and he, you know what I'm saying, he would put a plague on the land, and then Pharaoh would be like, yo, 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 entreat the most high God for me. So you can get the, you know what I'm saying, frogs out the land, or you can get the lice out the land, or, you know what I'm saying, the bugs and all this stuff that's covering the land, you can get that stuff out. Help me out here. What, what Moses do? So most high God, you want to move that stuff, you know what I'm saying, move it. And the most high God did it, and Pharaoh changed up, and Pharaoh did it multiple times. He's in there like, oh, no, nah, I'll let y'all go. No, nah, y'all ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? But he'd tell him, he'd tell him, look, man, if you pray for me and you do that, I'll let you go. Moses would do it. And he'd be like, never mind, y'all ain't going nowhere. He did that multiple times to Moses. But every time, guess what Moses did? Prayed for him. Helped him out. Right? This is what y'all, she was talking about. The, the, the king of Egypt wasn't no, wasn't no brother. Right? So when we look at the scripture and we look at the examples that we have, right, of the men of God, they don't have to be our brethren. They don't have to believe what we believe. They don't have to be on one accord with us. And oftentimes the people that we want to forgive are, are that want our forgiveness, right? Those people oftentimes were not joined with us. So the, the only reason I bring this up is because I don't want us to get in the mindset and be like, okay. Well, I'm only going to forgive my brethren because what we'll do, what Satan will do is Satan will use that against us. And then we'll start to justify why people are not our brethren. Therefore, I don't need to forgive them. Right. Oh, well, he sinned against me. That's why he asked him for forgiveness in the first place. So clearly you ain't my brother. If you commit a sin, all my brothers is righteous. If you sin, you ain't my brother. And you start putting all these barriers between what's your brother just so that you don't got to forgive somebody that'll end up being a trap for you. So if you want the safest possible route. Anybody who asks you for forgiveness, you do it. You want to be even safer than that. Don't hold no grudges in the first place. Don't they ain't even got to ask. You. you know what I'm saying? They ain't even got to ask. You. you know what I'm saying? Just don't hold no grudges in the first place. Real quick. Grab um, grab uh, Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter 5, give me verse 2. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 2. Watch what the book says. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the most merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are per persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not to destroy, but to fulfill. You good. Right. So if we believe that, right, if we believe that we should bless the people that that person. Barely I said, I passed from the law to all be fulfilled. If we believe that, you know what I'm saying, that we should bless the people that persecute us, then it's easy to forgive. It's easy to forgive these people. Right. This Pamela said, because in that sense, y'all gets the glory when we forgive. Yeah. Any any time that we obedient to the most high God, then he get the glory. All right. Anytime he command us to do something, then it's his glory. It's like it's like uh, we talk about it sometimes, but it's just like if uh, if uh, President Biden, if he set up something and he said, hey, we going to war in. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We're going to war in one of these countries. You know what I'm saying? And and he set up that war and he fund the war and he send a bunch of the troops out there and they go out and they get to fighting. 
And let's say they fighting against uh uh what was that group that we was fighting against? You know what I'm saying? The other, you know what I'm saying, other stuff that they be having us fall for is uh oh ISIS. You know what I'm saying? Let's say, let's say ISIS, they did try to say ISIS came back. You know what I'm saying? But let's say ISIS came came back in full fledged and and we sent some troops out there to fight ISIS, and then we defeated ISIS, right? And if we defeat ISIS, they are gonna say President Biden defeated ISIS, right? That's how they are gonna look at it because he's the commander in chief, right? The same thing with the king of uh the king of Saudi Arabia when they get to dropping bombs on Yemen and all these places, it's the king of Saudi Arabia who won that war or won that battle or whatever. It's Benjamin Netanyahu who who's who's uh who's uh dropping bombs on um on uh Palestine right now, right? It's Hamas or the leader who of who Hamas that that you know what I'm saying is wait, wait, killing wait, wait. and holding hostages or whatever. Now these people are not literally the people that are doing these things, right? But because they have the command, they get the glory. Right. Because they have the command, they get the glory. So in the same way, when we obey the commands of Yah, then he gets the glory. And that's our job. Right. We're going to talk a little bit more about that as we get deeper into the gospel. When we get to uh, we get to uh, uh, John four, uh, 15, John 15. You know so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, anytime that we obey what Yah, Yah says and Yahushua says, then. That puts us in the space where he gets the glory and then we can be glorified with him in the end. We don't get our glory now, right? Right now, he gets the glory. And in the end, he glorifies himself and us with him. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what we look forward to. Oh, wait. Any wait, other wait, questions? Bro, hold on. Wait a second. Wait a second. You said you what? Hear you hear me? Yeah. You dropped for a minute. I know, I know you did not put no cat eye glasses on my nephew. What is going on? Any what? You got my man in cat eyes. You mean cat eye glasses, boy? I don't know, bro. You know what I'm saying? You play this video back. Don't let me. <laughs> let, <laughs> let me, no let, dark, let me tell you. Glasses. Uh, come to Vegas, There's my man. Got a cat eye got a problem. Your uncle can't see. <laughs> got the cat eye. <laughs> oh no! Nah. You know my mom had them days in the eighties. <laughs> so, so Pamela, you wrote something, but it's blank for some reason. I don't know. Oh, now it ain't blank. Now I guess you. Uh, it was smile face or laugh face. Any other questions? All right, let's pray out. Oh, and uh. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, let's pray out. 